here's a quick video of me turning this old rusty frame into an awesome green machine. You'll notice throughout the video I sped most of it up just because it would take an extremely long time showing every piece. Uh, I will be doing another video showing some of the uh, harder parts that you might be wondering about. Um, but obviously from the get-go I take everything off the frame, um, every nut and bolt. That way I can get down to the bare frame. Uh, I There was an issue with the spindle here where I think the previous owner hit it. You can tell it's broken the weld right there. So I um, clamped it, it down and welded the welded it up. Uh, threw down a lot of weld on that piece. I don't think it'll be breaking again anytime soon. Um, I kept most of the rear axle the same. I didn't change the bearing or the sprocket on that and uh, just because they were they were fine and I reused the shocks. Now that it's down to the bare frame um, this stuff that is just chipping away I was easily to easily able to remove that with a grinder and wire wheel. Uh, these this vertical tubing and and everything up above where the water doesn't sit on uh, just a light sanding uh, did a good enough job to be able to get the paint to stick. Uh, you'll notice that uh, I don't completely get down to the bare metal. Obviously if I wanted to do a professional job I'd go get it sandblasted and I'd probably get it powder coated um, to get it uh, looking like new again. But for, uh, for what I wanted to do this was a, a quick easy spray paint job was, is good enough. Now time for reassembly. You'll notice the box there on the left with all of the parts. Something I've noticed that helps me is as I am taking it all apart, I put the bolts back in the same hole or whatever it was that it came out of in the shock or steering wheel. And I put them all into one box. That way I'm not losing anything. Uh, you'll notice uh, here my son is starting to be in almost every picture because once the frame was done, every time I was out working on it, he had to be out there working on it too. Made for some extra long uh, nights because, as I said, I tried to put everything back in a box and he liked taking everything out and trying to put it, put it together himself. So he was pretty excited about this build. For the reassembly, I try to use as many as the uh, existing parts as possible. Uh, twofold, that makes the reassembly go pretty easy because you don't have to modify the frame or anything, and you're not having to buy new parts. So I did replace some of the cables for the throttle and the brake. These mechanical shocks that Yerf dogs use um, aren't too bad uh, if you're doing a lot of off-road. Uh, trail riding I would probably pick up some heavier duty ones uh, and I didn't change anything on this rear axle like I had mentioned earlier so I kept the bearings the same the sprocket and the brake uh, rotor I did replace the throttle cable and put a new seat on it the seat was pretty simple it's just made with a plywood base I reused the foam from the existing cart and I got some marine grade uh, vinyl. That's what I uh, used for the, the seat cover. I uh, just cut it out to the form I wanted and stapled it all around. Uh, they're not too bad. Here's the part where I did modify from the original Yerf Dog. They have some Tecumseh uh, six and a half horsepower engines and I ended up getting a brand new Harbor Freight uh, Predator engine. These aftermarket torque converters are pretty easy to work with the Harbor Freight Predator engines. You could usually find them online pretty cheap. Uh, once everything's aligned, you'll most likely need to break your chain to get the right length and with a master link you can uh, simply connect the chain up. I bolt down the motor after the chain is connected just to make sure I can get the right tension. Uh, here I quickly uh, set up the throttle cable. 
I have another video going into more detail about that. Not going to do it here. And I'm to the finishing touches, just adding the roll cage. Uh, making sure all of the fasteners are down tight just so that nothing comes off as it's uh, going. Uh, this is something I just added, uh, some grip tape. It's not, too, uh, it's not too hard and it's not too expensive. I think grip tape you can find, you know, skateboard tape for about 10 bucks or so. And it makes it, uh, makes it look really good. Now that it's completely assembled and all done up, uh, some of the features that I may not have shown in the video are I did add a second kill switch off of the motor up by the steering wheel. Uh, those are some new tires, old ones were getting a little bald. I also added seat belts, uh, already mentioned the grip tape and new seat cover. But uh, in this project, I'm in a total about 400 bucks. Um, that includes picking up the cart frame for roughly 75 bucks or so. Um, so, you know, new belts, new engine, uh, clutch. There was the paint, um, some of the bolts and cables. Uh, all totaled, you know, about 400 bucks or so. All said and done, I am pretty excited about how this cart turned out. I do like the green and black um, paint. That green really pops. So I'm going to end just with a couple short clips of just me riding around the yard. Uh, I got a big old giant cottonwood that uh, gives me some fun roots to go over. You'll see my daughter thinks it's a pretty bumpy ride and for her that was that was good enough. So I uh, hope you enjoyed. I will be doing another longer video and going into more details of the build. So uh, stay tuned for that. Once the extended version is complete, I will link it here. Hope you enjoyed and uh, leave a comment and like. Thanks.